signs of Germans. A man was to uplift the statue of Hermann von Wiesmann. They bombed uh, during the First World War, the first uh, Katubenda, that's the house they were used German as the museum. Uh, so different things were exchanged by that time, by the British. And among the other thing was to change the name from Dutch Ost Africa to find the local name that will be presenting the people for a long year. So different names was presented. Among was Victoria, but then Rwanda, Queen Victoria. Uh, so they needed the, the country to be named as Victoria. So different names was presented. But later on, they just found that the common name along the area, the west part of Tanzania, that's in Kigoma, that's uh, Lake Tanganyika, they were using that name. So from there, they just used the name Tanganyika Territory. From there, they announced that in 1920s, the name Tanganyika, the country, is no longer Dutch Ost Africa. It stands as Tanganyika. So from there, we had our own independence in 1961. That's 9th of December, under Mwalim Julius Kambarage Nyerere who was the first president who ruled from 1961 to 1985. And we have passed through the court, they are just giving a good vote. Oh, okay. They have not passed. They have not passed. Wow, that's good. Yep. Oh, so, all those during uh, before colonial time, during colonial time, before colonial time, we were under local chiefs. We had chiefs in every region. As you know that in Tanzania we have more than 120 ethnic groups. And each has its own language. <laughs> Though the language that brings us together is Swahili. So soon after independence, now the president became the top of all other chiefs. The chiefs will have their own power within their regions. But right now things have been changed. So here, Chief Thomas Mariale presenting Kilimanjaro, Mwami Telezantare Viteko, the queen. She was in the west part of Tanzania, in Kigoma region. She was the queen. So along there, she was the only female who ruled along there. And in 1958, he became the ruler of all other chiefs. He, she, she was born in 1922 and died in 1989. She died with 77 years. So, so she was the first female to learn, I mean to have, uh, she was involved on the issue of uh, independence struggle, but also she showed much support, Mwalimu Julius Kambarage Nyerele, on the way to independence. So in 1961, 9th of December, we had our own independence under Mwalim Julius Kabarage Nyerele. It's from there, oh, we just put it down the British flag and uplifted our own flag. So this is Tanganyika, not Jamaica. <laughs> it's similar, right? Yeah. It's like from Jamaica, right? Yes, <laughs> okay. Tanganyika. Uh, in Tanganyika, the green color <laughs> presents uh, vegetations. Yellow present wealth and minerals. Black, green and Black gold. present the people. people. Same thing in Jamaica. Yes. Is that why is it in, in Jamaica? It is the same thing in Jamaica. Thank you. Ah. So here he's anointed as the chief now. And we have the first Tanganyika, I mean the ministries of Tanganyika soon after independence. So in 1961 we had our own independence. 62. We became republic. 64, the Union between Tanganyika and Zanzibar. That's we have Tanzania. So the flag was changed from three colors to four colors. Present water bodies. And Zanzibar and Tanganyika was, uh, became in common on 26th of April, 1964, whereby the soil from Tanganyika and soil from Zanzibar one mixed together yeah. in one vessel. That's now is Tanzania. So the name Tanzania 
came after taking the first three letters from the word Tanganyika, which is T A N, and the other first three letters from the word Zanzibar, which is Z A N. If we join the six letters, it sounds as Tanzan. And most of the African country names are ending with letter I A. That's Nia. Like Ethiopia, Nigeria, Somalia, Algeria, Liberia. Liberia. From there they just took the letter the Nia. That's I A. They added to the Tanzan and sounds as Tanzania. And from there now we started uh, uh, standing as the United Republic of Tanzania. Soon after independence, I mean the Union, Tanda, uh, 1965, Mwalimu Julius Kamaraga Nyerele visited China for the first time. And from there, he adopted socialism in 1965. And the time he came back, in 1967, two years after his arrival, he announced that Tanzania is the socialist bloc and self-reliance in 1967. And from there, different things were changed. Among was in education, but also in agriculture, that the students, they have to go to school and start standard one with seven years. But then there were no birth certificates. So the only thing they were doing, you have to try to the side of the year. If your kid is less than seven years, he or she can't touch the other side of the year. If he or she is less than seven years old, we don't manage to touch the other side of the year. We don't bend him this way or the other way. If he or she stands straight, this way around. That was among the means. But the aim was, if you study standard one or seven years, all the subjects has to be in Swahili. Other than only one subject, which is English, has to be in English. So kids or students will have a foundation on how to understand the Swahili language. But also, in 1961, is the time that Swahili was announced as the national language has to be used in all governmental offices is after all the language that we have here 120 it just saw that this Swahili language is the only language that is spread more distance to compare to the other and it was easy for everyone to learn and understand it so in 1967, we had uh, the Arusha Declaration. I had one of you explain to understand more about the Arusha Declaration. We have a special museum that's named as Arusha Declaration Memorial Museum. That's in Arusha. Excellent. We were there earlier. We were there last week. Is it there? Wow, that's nice. So oh. far, uh, in 1961, 62, 64, 67, uh, the agriculture has to be in the school curriculum. That students, they have to learn agriculture from school. But also, every family must have at least one acre of the farm. And also school must have at least one acre of the farm. So kids or students, they be learning in the class. They be practicing at, the, at, the, at their school. But also, if they been back home on Saturday and Sunday, they have to go and work. Yeah. And these are things that are still happening today. Yes. That's why about, we can say, 80% of the Tanzanians are the farmers. We are the farmers. We are still depending on the cultivation. And uh, so a kid will learn from school, will be teaching their parents, 
on how to deal with the Adikat in professional ways by using the manures and different things. So those are the things that, uh, and they're expecting that a student will start standard 7 7 years, will finish standard 7 with 14 years. That means that he's no longer a dependent in his family. He can become a farmer elsewhere. He can go and work as a security guard. So that's one of the means that we are using that to have a structure so we have a lot a lot in this thing yes family incredible history at the national museum of tanzania in dar es salaam